Today, I'm back with another mega physical media ranking video for you all. We're talking all my Criterion titles. I'm giving you my definitive ranking of my favorite movies from my Criterion collection. That is 35 titles. I'm going to rank them from my least favorite up to my most favorite. So you got my recommendations for this Criterion sale time. But before we get into this ranking, if you love collecting Criterion just like me and being part of this amazing Mega League of Film Fan community, go ahead and click that like and subscribe. That way you stay entertained and up to date on all the latest physical media topics and leave in the comments below which Criterion titles are you most excited about. So let's get right into this list starting with the bottom here. Of course, we got to have the seventh seal. I knew this one was going to go at the bottom. I despise this movie. It's super, super boring to me. It's very classic black and white foreign language film, but I just don't think it's that entertaining. The only cool thing in there is seeing death, which gets referenced in other movies, but just overall kind of a snooze fest for me. I never really got the appeal to this one. All right, next up. Oh my gosh. Oh, can't watch this one again. We got Maholan Drive, which is a movie about I don't know. I still don't know. I've seen it a couple times now. It makes no sense. It is so bizarre and weird. It's just filmed and structured in a very non-Hollywood type of way. Uh, yeah, I just, ugh, can't recommend that one. Next up, we got one that people are going to be shocked that it's so low on my list. But let me explain myself. I'm going to have On the Waterfront. I just think this is a story topic I've seen done better now in more modern Hollywood. So even though Marlon Brando gives a great performance here, that's about it for me. So he totally could not be a contender for one of my top spots, unfortunately. All right, next up, we got to have Triangle of Sadness, another kind of bizarre movie here where I think it gets better towards the end of the movie. It has some social commentary on social class systems, but the first act is kind of a drag, and I don't know if it has the best ending in the world, so can't highly, highly recommend this one to everybody out there. It's a very specific kind of audience. All right, next up, we got to have Time Bandits, which actually has a super cool lenticular slipcover, which is why I wanted it. It's a, a sci-fi kind of fantasy movie. Uh, I think even Sean Connery shows up at some point. But overall, just a movie where it's like, I kind of enjoyed seeing some of the fantasy elements, but it was a little confusing at parts. And I don't know how many more times I would want to rewatch it, but definitely cool slippy on it. All right, next up, we got to have Punch Drunk Love, which has Adam Sandler in it, but don't be fooled. It's not a straight up comedy, much more of a dark comedy. A lot of depressing moments in here, a lot of sad moments. Uh, it is bizarre. Some scenes don't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so it's okay. It's an okay of a watch, but still can't recommend it for everybody. All right, next up, we got to have... The Graduate, which I know everybody absolutely loves this movie, and I think it's decent enough. You get a young Dustin Hoffman in here giving a great performance, uh, you know, with Mrs. Robinson, and it's like a coming-of-age story. Uh, so there's definitely some good scenes in here, but it's not one I want to rewatch all the time. But still a quality film, I will say. Next up, we gotta have Raging Bull, a young Robert De Niro in this one who gives a very dramatic performance, but it's not a very happy movie. It doesn't end in the most positive kind of way. So that's where it differs from, say, a Rocky story. So even though I do love my boxing movies, it's just kind of a darker tale of a boxing movie. All right, next up, we gotta have Pan's Labyrinth which is directed by Guillermo del Toro. A lot of great fantasy elements in here, some fantastic visuals, but it's a foreign language film, which to me, it's just a little bit tougher to keep up with the subtitles and whatnot, but good performances in here overall. So still a great quality film. All right, next up, we got to have Night of the Living Dead, which is a really fun, low budget zombie movie. That just has some very dark moments in it. It's a classic black and white film. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy this one. And could see myself watching it again during spooky season. Alright, next up. We gotta have Charade. Which has Cary Grant in it. And Audrey Hepburn. Which is a great 
acting duo. This movie is like a Hitchcock film that Hitchcock did not direct. So it's that same kind of thriller suspense vibe. Uh, the only problem here, not really any special features on this. So don't know if you need the Criterion version, but it is a quite entertaining film if you're into those kind of Hitchcock type of fills. All right, next up, we got to have Blowout. Yes, you get a young John Travolta in here for Blowout. And this one, I like kind of how it shows some of the Hollywood aspects. You get a little bit of a thriller suspense mystery in there. So it's an intriguing story for sure. Um, so I did enjoy this one. All right, next up, we got to have... The Game, yes, this is a thriller suspense movie. I believe David Fincher directed it, if I remember correctly. But it's a movie that keeps you on your toes. It keeps you guessing all the way up till the end. So sometimes you just want to watch a movie like that. So The Game, much more modern of a movie, I believe, in the 90s. So I did enjoy it. All right, next up, we got Malcolm X, yes, a powerhouse performance from Denzel Washington, one of the best actors of all time, who really shows all the life aspects of Malcolm X, which makes this a super long movie, so you got to plan a day around it, but for the performance alone, it's definitely worth a watch, great special features, great packaging, uh, really like Malcolm X in the collection. All right, next up, we got to have Shaft, which is a really fun kind of James Bond filling movie in a 70s style I really was entertained by this one. I love the Shaft song as well. So yeah, great little action kind of uh, thriller type of movie, I guess you could say. All right, next up, we got to have a romantic comedy with Bringing Up Baby, a classic black and white film. But you got, uh, let's see, uh, Catherine Hepburn this time and Cary Grant. Great duo in this movie, but very, very funny. Still makes me laugh to this day. So the comedy keeps up with today's current times. Really, really love it. And it's a short runtime of a movie. Highly recommend. All right, next up, we got to have another great comedy with It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Hopefully I got all the mads in there. But this is an epic comedy. You got like every comedian of the time in here, even the Three Stooges show up in a cameo. But it's very, very fun. If you've seen the modern rat race, that is what, you know, that's a remake kind of to this premise, treasure hunting, a uh, competition kind of movie with all sorts of shenanigans. Really, really funny film. A very long movie, though. Got to plan a day around it, but really enjoyable as well. All right, next up, we got to have Double Indemnity, which is a, a thriller suspense film. Kind of feels like a Hitchcock movie as well, but I really like this story, too. Kind of keeps you guessing. And just this wild premise of an idea that this uh, this character came up with in here uh, to try to pull a fast one on the system. Uh, but highly, highly recommend if you're into the kind of the noir thrillers, right? Really enjoy this one. All right, next up, we got to have, uh, speaking of kind of a noir thriller, we got Devil in a Blue Dress. We got Denzel Washington, another great performance in here. But, you know, it's like a detective mystery kind of movie. I love those mystery style movies. This one keeps you guessing as well. I love the way it's filmed, too, with all the set pieces. Uh, really enjoyed this one. All right, next up, we got to have Arsenic and Old Lace. This is a classic black and white spooky tale of a movie. Uh, kind of reminds you of a Hitchcock film as well. But you got Jimmy Stewart in there. My Favorite classic actor of all time. Gives a great performance. Uh, I just love the fall kind of feel to this movie. Uh, really, really good one for uh, October. All right, next up, we got to have After Hours, a Marty Scorsese film, which is more like a dark comedy. All sorts of weird things happen in this movie, and you're like, why is this happening right now? But it's just intriguing, and there's really good filmmaking techniques in here. So it always keeps me interested. So really like After Hours. Next up, you gotta have a staple in any Criterion collection, and that's gonna be 12 Angry Men, which this is a classic black and white version where you have amazing acting talent that's just telling this amazing story through all this dialogue and debating moments, this intensity, all in a jury room. It is fantastic. It's just, oh, it's breathtaking. And it only takes place in that one kind of setting. It's fantastic. All right, next up, we got to have, ooh, a more recent one with Thelma and Louise, 
which is like a, a buddy duo kind of movie with these two amazing actresses here. Uh, it's just a thrilling kind of story. It's interesting to see how it plays out, uh, especially the ending kind of, you know, jaw drops you a little bit. But yeah, I really like this kind of road trip of a movie with these friends, you know, on the run. It's very, very fun. All right, next up, we got to have Menace to Society, which is a very street level, dark and gritty kind of movie. It's very intense. There's definitely jaw dropping scenes in here. It gets graphic at times. Uh, it's just a very real kind of movie. Very emotionally powerful. I love how it's filmed. I love the lighting in here. But yeah, very cool packaging design as well from Criterion. All right, next up, we got to have. The Royal Tenenbaums, which is a Wes Anderson film that's very easy to get into. There's great acting talent in here with like Owen Wilson and of course Ben Stiller and just so many more. It's very funny. You're going to be laughing during this movie. And yeah, it's just great to kind of see uh, this family's uh, shenanigans play out. But yeah, it's a Wes Anderson film that's a little bit more easily digestible. I would say. And then next up, another staple in any Criterion collection, you got to have The Princess Bride, which is now on 4K, best Criterion packaging design ever. I love the book design, but it's a very just entertaining family movie. You got great fantasy adventure elements in here. Everybody knows The Princess Bride story. Uh, it's, it's great. It's great. I mean, what can you say about The Princess Bride that hasn't been said before? You got to get this one. It's so, so good. All right, next up, we got to have now a trilogy here, and we got the Before Trilogy, which is a romance movie, but really dialogue-driven, where you got these uh, in intense kind of conversations between this romance, but what's cool about the film is that you got these three movies in this trilogy, and they all take place seven years apart in real time, which is really, really cool. You get Ethan Hawke in there. Uh, the main lead actress is really good, too. Uh, but just to see kind of how these days play out and just how they keep you engrossed into the movie in such a short kind of time. And you're just wanting to know, hey, what happens to this relationship next? Hey, what happens next? And uh, it's just a really good trilogy. All right, next up, we got to have another Wes Anderson film with the Grand Budapest Hotel. Amazing acting talent here, but does get very bizarre in a really outrageous Wes Anderson style. But I'm just into it. It's just awesome and gets better every time I watch it. All right, next up, we got to have... Yes, The Fisher King. We got Robin Williams in there that gives a wonderful performance. But this movie has everything. You got comedic elements in there. You got drama. You got romance. You got even some fantasy stuff that plays out which I just really like this mixture of a movie. Very entertaining, very rewatchable. Uh, yeah, great, great recommendation here. All right, next up, we got to have another Wes Anderson movie. You can tell I'm a Wes Anderson fan, right? But we got Moonrise Kingdom, really cool packaging as well. But I love this coming of age story. Uh, it, it's simple enough, but I'm a sucker for coming of age kind of romance movies. Um, yeah, I just, I really like how this one's presented. So really enjoyed Moonrise Kingdom. All right, next up, we gotta have Wally. -E. Yes, Disney's first movie into the Criterion Collection. Uh, I love this Pixar style movie. It plays like in two parts. First, it's like a silent film and then it becomes more action blockbustery, but it's an animated family movie for everyone. Uh, amazing special features. Criterion was able to pack into this one. Uh, I love the overall design. Just highly, highly recommend Wally. -E. It's so good for a Criterion pickup there. All right. Next up, we gotta have. Dazed and Confused. Yes, I absolutely love this 90s coming-of-age story. Uh, raunchy comedy of sorts. Just very entertaining. You got Matthew McConaughey in here. All right, all right, all right. I just really, really like this movie. I can rewatch it endlessly. So many standout moments. All right, next up. Ooh, speaking of rewatchability, we got to have one of my favorite Wes Anderson titles. Fantastic Mr. Fox, one of the best stop motion animated movies of all time, where they really make these animal characters seem like real life people with uh, family drama moments and just really, you know, emotional, powerful stuff in here. But it's stop motion animation. It's perfect for the whole family. 
but so many depths and layers you can dive into. Uh, I just, I love Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's, it's fantastic. What else is there to say? All right, next up, the most easy watchable Wes Anderson title to me. You got to have Rushmore in there. Oh my gosh, another coming of age story. Got relationship elements in there. Um, but I think everybody's going to be able to connect to something in this movie. Um, I'm, you know, everybody going to high school and stuff. Uh, you're going to see those things pop up in here. And it's just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Uh, really, really like this one. And it's not where Wes Anderson gets a little outrageous, right? It's very tamed. You can still see some Wes Anderson kind of stylized things in it. But it's just enough where it doesn't take away from the movie, where the story is just good on its own. It's just a little spice in there. So it's a perfect balance. Now getting into my first favorite Criterion title. And the first one I actually picked up that got me in the Criterion collection. Drumroll, please. We have to have, of course, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I absolutely love this movie. It's 80s raunchy comedy, coming of age story. You got a great cast. Sean Penn, Ash Bacoli in there. So many memorable moments. Uh, I love the 80s feel to it. I love the 80s packaging here. I mean, look at the neon color. It's beautiful. And then great special features in here. It just has everything. Surprise, this one isn't on 4K yet, but I rewatch this movie all the time. It makes me laugh, but it has dramatic emotional stuff in it. Really memorable scenes. I mean, you got Phoebe Keats in there, if you know what I mean. I uh, really love Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Can't recommend this one enough. If you've never seen this one, gotta check this out. Uh, it's, it's so good. It has stand the test of time. Love Fast Times. Uh, but there we go. Those were all the 35 movies in my Criterion collection ranked today for you all. And you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments now. What do you think of the titles I picked? How would you rank these titles? Because I know your ranking is going to be different than mine. How would you rank some of your own titles? What are ones I should add to my collection? Let's have those fun Criterion collection conversations down below and if you enjoy this physical media topic block bust another video right now and thank you so much my mega membership supporters